Life's a punk. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's up, people? I've got a question here, and actually a nice letter from a young man named Zachary. I wanted to read it to you and answer some questions. I think it'll be fun. Anyway, uh, he writes, hey, Casey. Uh, after I did the I was inverted meme, uh, we got to talking about Top Gun a bit, and writing this was proposed. Less questions than normal, but more of a story of having to change gears after an ironic letdown. I was born in 1984 and had damaged lungs, to the point I lived in the ICU for the first six weeks. When I came from home from the hospital, I had to take breathing treatments several times a day. Since the mask was some, somewhat like the oxygen mask of a fighter pilot, my mom would put on Top Gun every time I had to wear the nebulizer. It's safe to say I've seen the movie several hundred times and not, not a complete stretch to say over a thousand. I would tell my dad's friends, if you screw up just this much, you'll be frying rubber dog shit to Hong Kong at age three. <laughs> By the time college rolled around, those of us in the dorms could watch the movie on mute and knew all the words, not just the quotes. So needless to say that I wanted to be a fighter pilot when I grew up. Picture of uh, me here in my uncle's flight gear, an F-16 pilot. And he writes, I started flying at age 16 and already had my private pilot's license when I started at Embry-Riddle University, where you go to be a pilot or aerospace engineer. I obviously enrolled in ROTC and learned to boost my odds of getting a pilot slot from the Air Force was to join or try out or pledge Arnold Air. My first semester of college was spent pledging like others, but instead of binge drinking, we were out doing PT on Friday nights and mastering our knowledge of everything Air Force, from marching to uniform. I was fortunate enough to be one of the students voted in that semester. The following semester, the Air Force picked me as one of the students to award a hefty scholarship. To me, everything was lining up just as it was supposed to. I was on track to become an Air Force pilot as long as I kept doing what I was doing. Then I had to take a medical test. I was honest, stupid, but honest, and didn't bury my medical records that said I was cleared of having asthma at 13 years and four months. The Air Force cutoff at the time was 13 years. I also had less than perfect eyes and an astigmatism, preventing me from getting corrective surgery. After the medical, I had a conversation with the major at the detachment and was told that there was no way I was getting multiple waivers, effectively a get out of medical jail pass, and didn't have a chance at being an Air Force pilot. This was 2004 when America was very much patriotic and everyone was joining the military. I knew a guy who was medically rejected a pilot slot for having webbed toes. <laughs> Maybe you should join the Navy. Anyway, uh, so I decided the scholarship would be better served with someone else and withdrew from ROTC. I had never wanted to be a pilot for airlines, but to me, it was like a kid growing up wanting to be an F1 driver and settling to drive a bus. It wasn't for me. But I agreed with my parents to stick around another year and see if my mind changed. It never did change. My resentment towards flying only grew. What I loved doing in high school became a job, a chore, to the point I made excuses to postpone flights. At the end of my sophomore year, I left Riddle and because of a lease, took a semester at community college. I'm not knocking it now, but at the time I was embarrassed to drop out and go to a community college. So I took more than a full load and worked full time. Growing up, my parents always put an emphasis on education. It was understood college would be paid for as long as we were not stupid and we were also not allowed to pick terrible degrees. After stipulation, we were only allowed to change our minds on a degree once. This was my one change. I was naturally good at math, but I hated showing my work and I hated math theory. So I ultimately decided on getting my degree in statistics and ended up getting my bachelor's from Florida State. And with my parents never being one to let us slack off, grad school was a must. So I did, and I am on what I assume a short list of people who can say they went to community college and hold a master's degree from Yale in statistics. All of this because I watched Top Gun the best movie ever, an absurd amount as a kid. Yes, life hit me with a hard curveball, and the asthma that was linked to watching Top Gun was the medical reason I would never fly for the Air Force. But life isn't terrible. I spent nine years investigating healthcare fraud for the government. Then contracts, being how contracts are, my company was only rewarded one of three contracts, and I turned down a massive pay cut. I spent 10 weeks making my way from Norway to Romania and then decided to run from corporate America by purchasing an Airstream and I'm doing photography road trip with my dog. So I thought for anyone wanting to be a military pilot, figure out what schools get the most pilot slots. It's a lot easier to be the number 45 student at a school with 50 slots 
than it is the school that gets four slots a year. Join ROTC and an organization within ROTC to get even better the odds. Really think about the degree. I know of more 4.0 meteorology students who get pilot slots than a 3.2 engineer. Join the EAA, Experimental Aircraft Association, and get to know the older guys, AKA members usually. They have planes and love to talk to young blood, and while not the primary goal of joining, they might know people who can help you out. And don't take no the first time. The Air Force rode their pilots too hard and they left in massive numbers. So in 2011-ish, they started relaxing the standards a bit. There was a chance, had I taken a navigator slot originally, I could have transitioned to fly. I have more than a few friends who had this happen to them, but hindsight and all. So that's what, well, that's what Zach writes. Anyway, he writes some questions for me. He writes, are you a pilot? And can you talk about your flight background either way? <laughs> no and yes. Uh, no, I do not have my pilot's license. I have wanted to get it since I was a little kid, but the troubles with it are it's expensive and I have no business or logistic reason to get it. And when I was a teenager and in my 20s, I used to say there's no girls in the air. So what do I want an airplane for? <laughs> so I was into cars and racing and that's where I did business and building everything up like that. So huge aviation fan, flown in, of course, you know, Cessnas and, and Pipers, uh, been in Diamonds, uh, Boeing Stearmans, I've flown on B-17s, you know, wacky little experimental tail draggers from amphibious planes to peat and poles and hang gliders. So have a lot of fun and certainly love the engineering mechanics behind it. That's hence why we help in building planes at Genius Garage. But uh, certainly want to get my pilot's license in short order. It's just that all my spare time and money goes to Genius Garage. So that's, that's kind of that. But yeah, man, I really want to fly. So that'll come in the future, but you know, one thing at a time. And he writes, any chance of a Warbird type build with the Genius Garage? Uh, of course. <laughs> I mean, we started with a SOP with Camel. Technically, that's a Warbird. But I think you're probably thinking World War II or later. So, you know, absolutely. Whether that could be a replica or scaled down version, definitely. But naturally, with Genius Garage and the airplanes we build, we want them to be things that teach a curriculum well. So whether that's a composite airplane, an aluminum airplane, or like a stick and fabric, it all has to teach. It could even be a glider. So there's loads of ways to do it, but it's all about teaching. You know, that time may come. I'd love to have an L39 here. <laughs> so we'll see. In the future, we'll, we'll do it for sure. He also writes, it would be interesting if the garage had their own channel to track the work slash progress the students make over the course of their internship. I agree. However, there's only one of me to go around. So, and that takes a lot of dedication to really grow something like that. Obviously, I've been running the social media and what I've been doing is building this channel, the Casey Putsch channel, and talking about Genius Garage and as being a mentor and everything going on there because frankly, I've done enough silly things in my past life with cars and whatnot that Casey Putsch kind of pops the search engine up faster than Genius Garage. So we're using that, but I agree with you and we will have a great channel and I will be doing more tech stuff coming up. So stay tuned and please subscribe. Okay, let's see here. He writes, do you have a favorite project to come out of Genius Garage? You know, not really, because they all mean something. It's all exciting to be a mentor to and lead a team of students and watch them grow and really become something. So, you know, for me, it's really about the experience with the team and the students and seeing their growth. I mean, we've had a lot of amazing memories with the yellow Corvette back there. Certainly it's been on the winter circle in Indianapolis and in mid-Ohio. The students have overcome adversity. And that car for being an old Corvette has affected the lives of a lot of young people positively. And I know for a fact that some of the students that have worked on it now have six-figure jobs. So that's hugely rewarding. But I, you know, I love all the cars here. They're all amazing. Um, this uh, Champ slash Indy car here is kind of a pain in the butt because it, it likes to blow up now and then. <laughs> but you know, they're, they're, all, they're all exciting. And uh, so it's really, for me, it's, it's more about the students and the team. But let's see here, you write, did you hear anything while at Nellis Air Force Base about the F-117s flying around again? That was hands down my favorite plane growing up and what I actually wanted to fly had I gotten the, the, chance, the choice. I actually didn't hear anything about the F-117s at that time, nor did I see any F-117s at Nellis. However, when I was in the F-16 with the Thunderbirds and we blasted through Star Wars Canyon, the Jedi transition over like west of uh, Death Valley or whatnot, that same day, I believe, earlier, the same photographer caught an F-117 ripping through the canyon. So I don't know where they were coming from. Uh, I, I don't think it was Nellis unless I saw it. Maybe it was like Edwards or Groom Lake or something. I have no idea, honestly. But um, yeah, there was one up again. So something's cool is going on. But I don't know anybody that flies F-117s. I got a uh, young friend that's just starting to fly B-2s 
which is cool, but that's all I got, man. He also writes, random question slash poll. As I am more entrepreneur, entrepreneurial <laughs> than corporate grinder and have thought about opening a go-kart track after I finish my trip, do people still enjoy karting or is it something that just guys in our 30s still find fun? Friends with kids say they just want to sit inside all day. <laughs> also, Casey, thoughts on kart track ownership? Okay, so that's actually a few questions. Owning a go-kart track is, a, is like a crazy thing. So you're either gonna have the kind of track, you know, that's a serious race track, like, you know, sprint kart, asphalt, outside, real racing, right? Maybe with some rentals and stuff. And that's gonna really come down to how expensive the land is and the track, or if you can buy a track that already exists cheap, and then where are you at geographically, how many people you can, it's, it's basic business logistics. Uh, of course, you get some liability and whatnot. You know, honestly, man, I, I don't know. My gut feeling is it's, it's kind of like a really expensive hobby business. Kind of like slot car tracks nowadays. I'm so thankful there's kart tracks out there. They're a wonderful thing. But I think unless you have the right money behind it and the right business and uh, connections and you're in like the right geographical area of the United States as well as in a city, it's, it's going to be a tough business. More of a hobby thing, perhaps of something that had already existed. With regard to carts and karting, yeah, I mean, young people are going to want to do it too. I think us that were just before millennials or the earlier millennials, my one student hates me because I joke and I say I was the prototype millennial. <laughs> I've got a, like a lot of test mule miles on me. Anyway, you know, we like to get out and race, but to race carts, it does take a massive investment of time and a little bit of money, and you got to commit to going to a track. So that, you know, that kind of weeds out some people just because of how dedicated you got to be, but my goodness, I talk about kart racing a lot of my videos. It's, it's the best thing out there, especially for people that want to race. Autocrossing's cool, but for less money, for like the same price you spent modding your car and getting tires for autocrossing, you get an amazing kart, and the racing is 100 times better and more close, and you don't have to go stand out marshalling cones. So we really should be doing kart racing more. I don't know why people aren't, but it's kind of like motorcycle racing in the United States. It's sort of obscure. You know, uh, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough gig. There's the other kind of kart tracks, which are like indoor kart tracks. Those are nice because they can run year round, whether it's raining or snowing or whatnot. You can do corporate parties and whatnot. And any old Yahoo can get in those with the bumpers and stuff and not hurt themselves, nor do they have to own it. So, you know, it just comes down to the ac basic economics of business, you know, risk, liability, debt, space, blah, 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 all that. But check it out, kart racing's a great thing. And I just did the video inviting people, if you help me grow this YouTube channel so we can really help Genius Garage, like help us get a big share, like let's get subscribers. I'm inviting somebody out there on me, I'll pay for the kart racing day, to the original kart racing track where I first raced. I'm gonna teach you all my racing secrets and uh, we go to lunch in the Ben Wiki Viper and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So that's it, man. But Zach, as far as your story goes, I really feel for you. I really do. Life's a punk, <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, I get how you were crushed at Embry-Riddle and uh, went to the community college and whatnot and tried really hard. Uh, that's, that's gotta be a tough pill to swallow. But uh, I think it was cool that your mom uh, helped you truck through that t tough time in your life. And yeah, Top Gun is about the best movie out there. There's a reason my, vi my Viper's named Goose, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it has nothing to do with the bird. I hope to meet you someday, man. As far as flying goes, that's really great that you get to fly. I never got to get my, get my pilot's license, so if you end up in this neck of the woods, maybe you can come be a mentor to Genius Garage. That would be amazing. I'd love to fly with you more and all that. So, you know, I guess as a uh, parting note, Zach, let me know how the future goes. If you got nothing to fly, call me up, and I'll fly with you. Hope you guys subscribe, and I'll see you next time.